In the last few classes, we have been discussing analog to digital and digital to analog converters. And we saw that one of the architectures of the analog to digital converter requires a digital to analog converter in feedback. Okay. So, we studied the successive approximation register ADC or which is commonly abbreviated as R ADC and the way it works is you sample and hold the input and you compare it with a threshold and the threshold is variable. Basically, you change the threshold so that you essentially implement a binary search. Okay. So, first you have by the way this DAC it means it has some reference voltage. So, first you apply half the reference voltage and then identify which sub range it is in and go on. Okay. And this gives you the decision y and this y is used to fill the bits of the register. So, what you do is you starting from MSB you set each bit to 1 the following ones to 0 and based on the decision you set that bit appropriately you either leave it at 1 or reset it to 0 and then you do the same thing for the next one. Okay. So, if you go through n steps you will have n bit a to d conversion. Okay. So, at the end of n steps you read out whatever is in the successive approximation register and that is a digital representation of the input V i the sampled and held input V i. Okay. So, after this is done you take the next sample. Okay. If I show in the diagram all the details it looks very messy I will show some cleanly drawn diagrams later. Basically, this uh, if I call this conversion and this is sampling. The conversion takes n cycles after the conversion is complete you take the next sample and you convert that and so on. Okay. So, you need a bunch of different clocks for the sample and hold etcetera. Okay. I mean earlier when we had the when we were discussing only the sample and hold we discussed it with rectangular waveforms of equal duration that may not be the case you let it sample and then the sample and hold is idle for a while until this finishes conversion and this converts the clock will be going to the register and back and so on and then once the conversion is finished you will have uh, you will have the digital representation of the input. Any questions about this? Is okay. And there are other uh, algorithms which are also based on binary search. One of it, what happens is uh, this voltage and this voltage come closer and closer to each other, right? Finally, this voltage here, what is fed back, is within one LSB of that voltage. That's why you know that this digit corresponds to the input voltage, right? In a way, you can think of this as a feedback system also where eventually this gets virtually shorted to that, but of course, they are now uh, one of them is a continuous valued quantity the other one is a discrete valued quantity. So, it gets as close as it gets and that is it. Okay. Now, because the two come closer and closer it becomes harder and harder to compare because you are now comparing values which are very close to each other. So, there are other architectures in which you amplify that and then compare that is you uh, before comparison you have an amplification stage that is one thing that is one type of converter and there are other converters where you do not want to wait for n cycles rather the throughput is low that is only once in every n cycles you can have a digital output. Okay. So, you have something called pipelining which will uh, give you it will still take n cycles to convert, but in every cycle it will take a new sample and convert it and so on. Okay. 
So, that is another thing that can be done, but in general the uh, principle behind all these converters is binary search. So, if you understand this you will understand those converters as well at a functional level. Okay. Any questions on any aspects of A2Ds that we have discussed so far? And this DAC itself we saw how to make one of the most convenient ways is to have essentially a general impedance divider right. So, you can use it with op amps if you want to drive a heavy load then you need a feedback circuit. So, that that gives you a constant voltage that is independent of the load and so on. So, using binary weighted I will show the switches here, but the switches can be connected either on the left or the right side of the resistors. Okay. Essentially, a bunch of uh, binary weighted resistors, and this is controlled by BN, the MSB BN minus 1, BN minus 1 bar, and this is B0 and B0 bar. Okay. And this gives you because of the inverting nature of the amplifier, it gives you negative of what you want. If you put minus VRF here, you get a positive output, and so on. Okay. So, that is one way and if you are not interested in driving a load I mean this is important when you have some load here if you are not interested in that you can make a <coughs> what is known as a resistor string DAC this also we discussed right. So, this will give you an output voltage which is basically a binary weighted version of the input and the weights are determined by the bits. This is the least significant bit and this is the most significant bit. Okay. This is fine. I mean this for instance could be used in the feedback path of this RADC that is you make a sample and hold and that goes there and you have this feedback path and that goes here and so on. Okay. So, in this case I am assuming that the comparator input does not draw any current. Okay. So, in that case you could use this type of uh, DAC right. Any questions here? So, these are all binary weighted resistor based DACs and another very simple way this is very similar to the flash ADC that we considered earlier. You have a string of uh, resistors and you know that at these points you get the required output voltage right. For code 0 you should get that voltage, for code 1 you should get that 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and so on. So, what you have to do is to connect a switch here that is controlled by the appropriate logic. Okay. So, again I would not go into the implementation detail. So, 
all the way to S0 and then you have some uh, simple digital block that goes from your binary inputs B2, B1, B0 to S7 to S0. Okay. So, this is the control signal for the switch and this is called an encoder or a decoder or something. So, you can you can clearly make this for instance if B 2 B if you have B 2 and B 1 and B 0 that should be the one that is controlling this right. So, you will get an output here that is one of these things and that is the DAC voltage. So, this is also a, a way of uh, making a DAC this also can be used in the feedback path of the SAR ADC. Again just like with the flash A to D converter as the number of bits increases the number of resistors and number of switches increases substantially and this may, this may not be a good strategy. Okay. So, then you go for binary weighted stuff. If you take some more advanced classes in uh, data conversion circuits or analog ICs, you will see what the relative advantages and disadvantages are. At uh, functional level these are all the same thing all the three resistor DACs that I showed you they all give you the same result, but some of them are better suited for some things and some of them are less prone to error in some way, but have some other disadvantages and so on. Okay. So, those things you can study later. This is okay. So, at this point we know the principles behind analog to digital conversion essentially you have to compare the input with a number of thresholds one way or the other either you do it all in parallel or in sequence in some intelligent way okay. and uh, based on the results of the comparison you can find the digital representation uh, of the input that is the digit that is closest to the input voltage referred to some scaling of VREF. Okay. And one of the popular ways is to use the successive approximation register that is you do binary search and for that we needed a DAC and we also know at least the rudiments of how to make a DAC. right? So, you have to have one voltage and you will have a number of digital inputs and based on the digital inputs you uh, try to generate a variable voltage output okay? and that you can do by having binary weighted ratios of components that is you have resistors which are doubling right R2, R4, R etcetera or you can have other ways of doing it we discussed the R 2 R ladder and we now have the resistor string in this of course, all the resistors are equal to each other right and that is VREF. Okay. And we also know how to make the sample and hold you have two uh, <coughs> track and hold stages together and you could make a sample and hold is this okay. Actually, I mean in this particular case you do not need the two cascade of two track and holds what you do is I mean this can be just a track and hold what you do is when it is tracking this is not converting and when this is converting this is in the hold mode that is all you actually need only one you do not need you do not need to generate that square like waveform right. All you need to do is sample it and then hold it at some point. Any questions about this? This is okay. Yeah, yeah. So you have the binary inputs. this I assumed was simple I did not elaborate on it B 2 B 1 B 0 right. So, you define S 7 is a logic signal which is B 2 B 1 B 0 this means and of all 3. So, that means if you have 1 1 1 this switch will be on similarly S 6 would be B 2 B 1 B 0 bar uh, decoder yeah. yeah I forgot whether it is called an encoder or a decoder I think it is a decoder. Okay. You know the logic input for which each of the switches should be on and you generate you make a logic circuit that will give you that that is all. Okay. Also this is analog systems and labs so I am steering as far away from digital circuits as possible. Any questions here? This is okay. Now, we have <coughs> let us take this particular type of DAC resistive binary weighted resistor DAC. Okay. 
ok so essentially what is the principle at work here why do we get uh, an output that is dependent on the state of the switches and dependent on the digital input essentially it is an impedance divider right it depends on the impedance of different branches is this fine now I have used resistors but let us say could we do this with capacitors <coughs> would it be possible I mean let us not uh, I mean let us not have too many bits let us just have maybe one okay. So, here this is R and this is R right. So, if B 0 is 1 I will get V ref by 2 and it is 0 if B 0 is 0. So, this is of course, a 1 bit DAC right. So, it either gives you 0 or V ref by 2. Now, in using the same principle what is at work here just impedance division right you have two uh, resistors of equal value and then it gives you vrf by 2 and of course when the input itself is zero it gives you zero now the question is could i do this with capacitors would it work no vrf is dc because vrf is a constant voltage a known reference right <coughs> i mean you must have again solved this type of problem in uh, physics so let us just assume that before you started uh, mucking around with the circuit the capacitors were discharged ok right. So, maybe in fact I can say that uh, yeah initially both capacitors are discharged and B 0 is 0 ok. So, that means that I mean essentially initially I have a picture like this this is also at 0 volts because both capacitors neither capacitor has any charge on it ok. Now, I make B 0 equal to 1 what will be this voltage can you calculate it V ref by why how did you find that yeah how much is the impulse current how do you normally solve this type of problems it is correct what you are saying is correct there is an impulse current no it is not difficult to see. Huh? Okay, and then <laughs> I mean, then I have two capacitor, one here and one there, and one in my pocket. Will I get C V by three? <laughs> ah, you are saying okay. At least that's a. You are saying that the same current is flowing in both and the capacitor values are the same. So, in a given time the change in capacitor voltage which should be the same yeah that is correct, but is not there a, I mean is not there some standard way of solving this charges I cannot hear you man I think. exactly. So, I think at least one of the standard ways I think you are taught to solve this is if you look at this right. I mean nothing else is connected there charge cannot escape from that plate is not it. So, initially of course, both have 0 charge because this is at 0 and that is a I mean both capacitors have 0 voltage. So, clearly if you change this all that can happen is some charge can move from there to there ok. This is just another way of saying whatever voltage increases here the same voltage increase you see there ok it is just another way. But you could uh, for instance call this V x and say that C times V ref minus V x should be equal to that is the positive charge here right and that should be equal to the positive charge there because I mean this charge goes from there to there is not it that should be equal to C times V x. So, obviously, you will get V x to be V ref by 2 there are many ways to do that and it is also true that of course, the current is an impulse you can calculate it and so on ok. Is this fine?
now let me call this v a right this voltage here when i have v0 equal to 0 that is both capacitors are connected to ground and this voltage here is v a that is what I I mean that is my definition ok. And I will say v a of uh, 0 is 0 this I know I mean this is what we already solved if v 0 equals 1 this means v a will go to v ref by 2 ok. <coughs> now let us say v a of 0 is not 0 ok that is some v 0 or something. What will be the output voltage when V0 equal to 1? Please calculate that. You understand? This can have an initial charge, right? I mean, in this picture, it does not leak out. This voltage here initially is uh, v, V0. Let me call it V0. Now, I change this V0, I mean, this uh, switch from 0 to VREF or this uh, this plate, left side plate of the capacitor from 0 to VREF. That is, I turn off this switch, I turn on that switch. What I want to know is what with this voltage will be after you change the state of the switch. Is the question clear? No. Zero by two. Do you understand the question? this voltage is initially at some voltage other than 0 that is possible right because I mean it is a capacitor it could have some initial condition. But I mean this voltage is 0. So, you know what the initial conditions on the capacitor it is exactly the same by the way the two capacitors are of course the same. Then this goes from 0 to this is switched from 0 to V ref this uh, left side plate of the capacitor I want to know how much this is. resistor DAC we will change the notation a little bit I will call it 2 to the n r and this is also 2 to the n times r and this is connected to V ref and this is 0, this is the output. And if you want uh, 2 bits what would you do? <coughs> 2 to the n r, 2 to the n times r and you will have another branch what will be the value? Okay. And this is connected to B 1, this is controlled by B 1 and this is controlled by B 0. This is what I, we had right for 2 bits and for 3 bits. What do we have to do? We will have one more branch. What is the resistance value? 2 to the n minus 2. It will be half of uh, this one. Okay. Similarly, for capacitors, <coughs> we call this C and C. This is for 1 bit, for 2 bits what is the capacitance we need? We have an additional branch of course, to C okay. and I can go on like that. So, this will be the least significant bit.
Is it okay? So, the way you would make this is and each of these can be connected to three switches. This is the input voltage we in, this is V ref and this is ground or 0. Okay. And I also have a capacitor here, this will be C, C, the next one will be 2 C and so on. So, this is 2 to the n minus 1 C and this is 2 to the n minus 2 C you have a binary weighted array of capacitors and first you enable all the sampling switches okay And then, so then all the capacitors will get initialized to the input voltage, and then these are each of these, this will be SA bar uh, that is implied. So, I will just write Bn minus 1, Bn minus 1 bar, and so on. So, this is B0, B0 bar. So, then first you sample, uh, so basically, this whole thing. What is the total capacitance that we have here? What is the total capacitance? The geometry progression, right? What is that? Huh? 2 power n times c, okay. So, this whole thing is the capacitor of the track and hold, okay. And then uh, you hold the input voltage on all of them, but because of this binary weighting, you connect parts of them to V ref or 0. Okay. So, at this node, you will essentially get V i minus or maybe minus V i plus summation of B k times V ref by 2 to the k. Okay. So, you make a decision on whether this is 1 or 0 and then you have the successive approximation register updated and so on. Okay. Essentially, this structure what it does is to combine the uh, input track and hold and the DAC used in the feedback of the SAR ADC. Okay. Any questions here? So, just looking at this it may look a little weird, but if you look, take it step by step right. Initially you charge every capacitor to V in, so that you initialize them and after that you use the after that the charge on these once you open this right, the charge on this part does not change it just moves from one capacitor to another capacitor right. It's exactly like what we did here the charge here does not change. So, when you switch those capacitors to either V ref or 0 that voltage will change because of charge movement, but the total charge does not change. Okay. So, you will always get V in minus something or minus V in plus some binary weighted capacitance, a binary weighted uh, voltage okay. and by making the decisions on that you get the successive decisions of the uh, SAR ADC. The rest of the stuff is exactly the same. Okay. After uh, sampling the input, you first set 
the MSB to 1, the rest of it to 0. Based on that decision, you either leave MSB at 1 or reset it to 0. Then you have the second most significant bit, you set it to 1 and make a decision. And based on that, uh, based on the decision, you either leave it at 1 or reset it to 0 and so on. So, at the end of n cycles, whatever value is remaining in the successive approximation register is the uh, is the digital representation of the input. Okay. BK times. Okay. So yeah, I think this is going from. Uh, so if I sum this from zero to n minus one, this should be. Any other questions? <laughs>